<laughs> okay, E period. I'm sorry, I forgot to record you at the beginning. So I'm just going to do a quick summary of what I taught. Um, D period, if I forgot to mention something, tell me, okay? So we just started the notes. We're doing trigonometry. Trigonometry means triangle measure, and it's also the study of right triangles. A trigonometric ratio is um, essentially a fraction, a ratio we've seen written as like a set of colon, like a number colon another number, or a fraction A over B. Now, we're gonna do trig ratios for all of these. So everything we're doing is in terms of fractions, but we are only looking from the acute angle. So one thing I wrote was never 90 degrees. We are never gonna do from the 90 degree angle. Now I'm gonna lie to you in two years and tell you differently, but for right now, we're only gonna do acute angles. We came um, and we started looking at this picture and we saw angle X and that's like the perspective. That's like where you're standing in the triangle. And from there we labeled um, opposite, which is the side across from angle X. We labeled it a little O. The next thing we labeled was my hypotenuse, which you guys are really good at because it's my longest side and it's across from my 90. And the last one is your adjacent. That side just means it's next to the angle. So it's next to where we are. Okay, I think that we're all caught up now. So D e period, make sure that you have all of this written down. All right, D e period, you guys ready to come back? Perfect. Okay. I. I think I realized I stopped, I hadn't recorded when I started talking about these words right here. These are trig functions. And so in your geometry class, we're gonna learn about three trig functions. In pre-cal, I'm gonna teach you three more trig functions. Have you seen these words before? Yeah. Yes, maybe, no. Okay, these, this first one is sine. You say it like a positive or negative sine. When I taught public school, we had no problem saying sign, but as soon as I came to Catholic school, you guys all wanted to call it sin. I totally understand you guys talk about sin a lot at this school, but it is sign, 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 sign. The next word, cosine. Again, not cosine, but I'll know what you're talking about if you say cosine, it's cosine. That's another trig ratio. And then the last one is tangent. It's said just like it, you think it's said, so I'm not going to write that one up. Tan, yep, the abbreviation is tan. So sine, cosine, tangent are the three basic trig functions I'm gonna teach you at this level. They are a ratio, so they are a fraction. Sine is a fraction of the length of the leg opposite to angle X divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So sine is your opposite over your hypotenuse. Based on the picture we labeled, my opposite is X and my hypotenuse is Z. So my ratio here would be X over Z. That makes sense, right? All right, cosine, its ratio is the length of the leg adjacent to angle X divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So now it's adjacent over hypotenuse. What's the adjacent side on our picture? Y, good, what's the um, hypotenuse on our picture? Z, so my cosine of this picture would be y over z. And then the last one is tangent. Tangent is the length of the leg opposite to angle x divided by the length of the leg adjacent to x. So opposite over adjacent, what would my ratio here be? x over y, very good. Now let me teach you a quick shortcut for this. Have you either from like older siblings or from other kids in geometry heard the phrase so ka toa? Has anyone heard that? Would you say, L -l 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 have you done this? I haven't taught this to you. You might have done this. I, I don't know. I treat everything that I teach you like you've never seen it before, just in case you haven't seen it before. So, so ka toa is um, my little like mnemonic to help me remember this. So, so is for sign, the S is for sign, and my O and H go for your opposite divided by your hypotenuse. All right, ka is the same thing, it's cosine. Cosine is what? What is the A for? Good, over? Very good, hypotenuse. 
And then the last one, Toa, is tangent is opposite over adjacent. So on your quiz, I will actually write Sokotoa on your quiz. So like you don't have to remember this, but you do need to know what it means. If you're like, cool letters, Miss White, then that's gonna be a rough quiz for you. But if you're like, oh yes, yeah, Sokotoa, sine is opposite hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite adjacent, then that's good for you. Sounds like a second. It does. All right, this middle piece I don't really care about because we haven't studied similar triangles. I'll kind of bring it back. This just proves why we're allowed to do this with every single triangle. We're going to get into now doing ratios with actual numbers, not just letters. So I'm going to look at the next, next example. We're going to do sine, cosine, tangent from angle A and from angle B. So let's label all my sides according to angle A. What's my hypotenuse? If I'm looking from angle A, what's your hypotenuse? 15? Mm -hmm. What's my opposite? What side is opposite A? 12. The side opposite angle A is 12. And then that means my last one, nine, is my adjacent. OK? So now instead of X's and Y's and Z's, we're actually gonna have numbers. And if we can simplify, we're gonna do that. So sine of A, we know sine, if I forgot, so could so I'm gonna write it further down my page just in case. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's gonna be 12 over 15. If you can simplify it, we're gonna do that. So I think that becomes four over five. Cosine is off A over H. So it's nine over 15, three fifths, very good. And the last one's tangent, it's toa. What's my opposite? What's my adjacent? Good, 12 over nine is gonna be four over three. All right, good job so far. Now we've got a whole other column though that says sine of B and cosine of B and tangent of B. So now we need to shift our focus. We need to go stand on the other side of the triangle. I'm gonna go stand over here at B. I'm gonna stand at B now. What's my hypotenuse if I'm standing at B? 15, Ooh, yep, it's the same. It's always the same. What about my opposite? What's my opposite from B? Nine, nine. very good. My opposite now is nine. And then my adjacent is 12. Good. why don't you find sine, cosine, tangent of all of those pieces? We're now looking from B, so I'm now looking from my blue pen. All right, did you get the same answers I got? Do you notice anything kind of cool? It's on the answers match. Some of the answers match. They kind of like alternate, don't they? I've got like sine of A matches with cosine of B. And cosine of A matches with sine of B. And tan of A and B go together, they're reciprocals of each other. We can explore this more later and we will in pre-cal for sure. But what the cool thing that happens here is that the side of an angle is the same as its cosine of the angle's complement. Do you remember what complementary angles add up to be? 90, good. So that means an angle plus its complement should add up to 90. And that's what A and B would be. A and B would be two angles that together would add up to 90. All right, can you get your calculator out? The next part's a little calculator part. I went to angle B and I was like, okay, now I'm standing here. What's my opposite? My opposite is nine. So when you stand from different parts of the triangle, you see different things. Can you go back?
Oh yeah, sorry. All right, in your calculator, especially if you have a graphing calculator, please make sure you're in degree mode. If you have like kind of not a graphing calculator, you are most likely already in degree mode. So don't, that is not a graphing calculator. I think you're probably in degree. So I'm, I'll come check in a second. You will find out very quickly if you are in degrees or not. It does say DEG on it. So Ava says her calculator says DEG. So if you see that, you're good. I think you're good. Oh, no, you might not be. But you're going to watch me because I'm going to get my Calc 184 out. I can't remember what its default setting is so because you probably haven't touched it. And I like have played with my mode all day. So I want you to play, hit the breath, whoo, hit the button that says mode up next to the second button. And, and there's a line that says radian. And then there's a line that says degree. In two years, I'm going to teach you about radians. But for right now, all you guys know is degrees. So I want you to make sure your degree is marked. If your calculator doesn't look like mine, don't press any buttons, you're okay. I want us to press sine 30. So you have all these buttons. You have sine, you have a cosine, you have a tangent button. And if I press sine 30, it's gonna tell me what my trig ratio would be if my sine was 30. And I got 0.5. Mm -hmm, one half. Then you're good. Once you get that, I want you to do all of them. Sine, cosine, tangent of 30, et cetera. What do you want us to round to? Yeah. So you put your button there, but I think you put it there. So I think you put it there. Am I okay? It's round. You're not okay. Oh, no, that's okay. Yes. That's fine. I, I haven't decided if I want you to get off of that mode or not yet, so just stay there. That's fine. So you need to press 30 and then press 30. Um, and four places. You should have all of those filled out by the time I come up to the board. I'm going to keep going. I still have time until they dismiss us for this assembly. Also, your homework's only a front side today. Go team. All right, tan of 30. Nope. I want you to write what I have right now, but don't change your calculator. Um, I will decide by Thursday what I want you to do with your calculator. So look at me. Yeah. So that's what I was saying. Write down what I have right now. It's the same number, but I don't want you to get out of that mode right now. Yeah. I want you to round four places. So the 0.5, you can put some zeros behind it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, look at this. Any questions? All right, I'm doing 60. Sign 60. Cosine 60. Tan 60. The tans look a little bit different, but do you see how the signs and cosines are flipped from what they were? Perfect. Okay. I actually want you to kind of move in your notes. I, I do want to come back and do this problem, but I have to make sure that you see this problem before we go. I want you to flip to the back side of your of this sheet or like scroll down to the part where it says finding angle measures using trig. This is still a calculator thing, so that's why I'm kind of doing it while we're hitting the calculator button. All the, all the problems I just told you to do, we hit sine and 30 and cosine and 30, right? Now this next problem says sine of A, it's a sine of a variable equals your decimal. In order to get your A by itself, in order to get sine um, away from the A so I can find my angle, we have to do the inverse. We have to do sine to the negative one, second sine. So all that means is like on my calculator, I'm gonna press second and then sine. I think most of yours, it says shift or it says second. It's usually a different color button. Um, in the top left hand corner and then press sign and you should still get signed to the negative one.
And this time I only want you to round to the 10th. So I got 46.4. So I want you to press second sign and then type that decimal. Does anyone need any help with that? That would be um, degrees. Good question. Because um, it's the inverse side. It's like if you were multiplying by something, you were getting rid of the weaker five. So inverse side gets rid of the sign on this side so that we can find it. We will talk more about that later. I just wanted you to see. Um, and then sign. All right, flip back to that page. I'm going to do one more. I know I'm rushing. But that's what happens when they only give me 40 minutes to teach a lesson. <laughs> <gasps> I've had a lot of feelings. But... <sighs> They're going to come on the intercom and be like, no. <laughs> all right, we have to find all of the variables here. I think the easiest one is Z. Do you know how I'm gonna find Z? It's across from 36. No, uh, 90 plus 36 minus, or equals 180. Yes. Wait, plus X equals 180. Yes, all the angles inside here add up to 180. So essentially 36 plus 90 plus Z equals 180. As long as you can add them up and subtract them from 180. Thank you, Alea, 54. Now, to find X and Y, we're gonna focus from 36. What's my hypotenuse here? What's my opposite? X. And what's my adjacent? Good. Because I'm looking from 36. So the side across from 36. Okay. I'm gonna find X first. Which trig ratio uses O and H? So, yes, so does. So we're gonna do sine. We're gonna say sine of 36 equals opposite. What's my opposite again? X over, what's your hypotenuse? H. Okay. You guys are doing great. I still need a little bit longer. I need to get X by itself. How do I get X by itself? Multiply. Multiply by eight on both sides. So I've got eight sine 36 equals X. Great question. Literally what you see. I'm gonna type eight. I'm gonna type sine. I'm gonna type 36. Just press enter. 4.7. Let me find why and then we can go. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. When you have sides, we round to the tenths. If you're doing like cosine, sine, tangent, round to four places. All right. So now to find why, I want to do A and H. Which trig function uses A and H? Huh, oh. cosine. So I'm going to write cosine of what? What's my angle? Cosine of what was your angle? 36. And then my adjacent is Y. And what was my hypotenuse? Eight. Eight. Good. This math is the exact same thing we did before, right? Multiply by eight on both sides. I get eight cosine 36 equals Y. And I'm going to physically type that. That's almost identical to what I wrote before, but the first one was sine. This one's cosine. Mm hmm. We're going to make it 6.5. Okay. Well, I can't just do is for, is for is. You could for that last side. Yes. Yeah. Chase asked, could I just do Pythagorean theorem to find y? Absolutely. But since we were learning trig today, I thought we'd practice it again. Your homework is just a front side, and I will see you Thursday. I think you leave your stuff. I don't think anyone had their stuff in the hallway.
We will finish these notes and we'll review for the quiz. All right, go be good.